on this know. computer. Okay, it's recording. It's recording, perfect. Yes. Are we recording to the device or to the cloud? Uh, recording to the device. How much space lots. do you have on Lots. Okay, she says lots. She, <laughs> she spared no expense on that. So uh, as the, our other agents uh, come in here running late, we want to talk a little bit about what are some challenges that agents are facing. So let's just fire them away. Go ahead. Inventory. Inventory. Yeah. Not inventory. What else do we got? Generation. Leads. Right? A system to generate leads. What are, what's another problem? Like guidance. Mentoring. Mentorship. Uh, declining um, declining uh, percentage. Uh, you know, what it, the, oh, yeah. the typical. Yeah. Uh, the, the, commi the commission, commission right? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Decreasing commissions, holy cow, how are you going to deal with that? I because, buyer, whatever, right? Yeah. Because here's what we know. They're all out there. We're talking about that. What else? What's in our challenge? According to NAR, the number one challenge for agents is they have no what? Say it all together? Leave. Worse. Say it. Retirement. Retirement. Oh, yeah. How do you get out of this game? Not that any of you would ever want to leave real estate, in case any of our buyers or sellers are listening, but no retirement. Okay. Rising interest rates. Yeah. They made level this year, but still. Let's go with a broader term than just rising interest rates. Let's talk about market fluctuations. We all know what's going to happen, right? Real estate goes up. What does it do? It comes down. And then it goes back up, right? So market fluctuations. Don't be anybody making fun of my butt online right there. Sticking out. Market fluctuations. What else we got? How about just uh, lifestyle? The, the millennials yeah. uh, have a very different outlook, which might lead to them deciding to not buy something, right. buy a house, make long-term commitments. Trends in real estate. <laughs> Based on socioeconomic factors. I'm not writing all that out. Let's just write the word trends. <laughs> that sounds a hell of a lot smarter than what I just said. Yeah. No, it's exactly what you were saying. Mm -hmm. There are trends that happen based on people waiting to get married longer, people waiting longer to have kids, uh, trends. We just saw Forbes magazine put out something that said, do not buy a home for the tax write-off. Wow. A headline in Forbes magazine wow. trying to kill the U.S. economy, the number one leading factor in the economy, driving the economy is housing, and they put that out there. Crazy. Now, if you read into it longer, it spells it out, right? But uh, if you're just a headline reader, which nowadays, let's just face it, we all kind of just skim, right? That's what it said. Don't buy a house. <laughs> Forbes. Thanks, Forbes. Appreciate it. Uh, what else are we missing out there? Training. Uh, training, yeah. We'll put that in with mentorship. Mentorship and training, big. Well, you did mention the tax write-off, and it is, it's at least conceivable that that eventually is going to go away, whatever Forbes says. Right. Right? Eventually. Changes right. in tax codes. Yep. Trends. We'll keep that in the trends part. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I like that. What else? What else are we missing? I think in the training part is just learning technology, and that would probably be in training. Because yep, it would be in the training. I'm going to put it down here separately, though, because here's what we know. It's great, Jim, because technology is taking over everything. Every industry. I don't care what industry you're in, you're being affected by technology. And if you're not abreast of it and your company is not ahead of it, get run over. All right. Jim, can you add to that social media? Yes. Social media. Just social like media, that. technology, and social media. Good one, Jess. I mean, to reach the millennials, they're all on the phones. Right. And, and if you're not on social media, if you don't have your business, you know, on sites and Facebook and whatnot, you're out of You're out of it. I mean, Marketing. Yeah. if you're not... If you're not marketing where the eyeballs are, you're in trouble. The old school ways of marketing are gone, right? So let's talk about leads. Is that everything? Actually, we have one more that I'm thinking of that is a problem. It's sort of in the trends idea of it, but what about 
cash flow. Mm -hmm. Do we see seasonal changes here in Columbus? We're getting ready to be 30 below next week, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not a lot of buyers are going to be going out buying houses that week. They're just going to sit on their butts and wait until the weather breaks. We're going to see that happen, right? So cash flow for agents, especially in this part of the country, is an issue in the winter. We see that uh, cash flow, you have to hoard your money from the spring and the summer and literally put enough money away that you know that you can get by in the winter. There's some times when you don't have closes, okay? So leads, generating leads, what's one of the things that's happening right now with leads? What are we seeing happen? There's companies out there that are doing what with their leads? Selling. They're selling them to us for how much? 30% of your commission. Yeah. Let's name some of them. Zillow. Zillow. Who else? Redfin. Redfin. Who else? You know some. You're using one? Op City. Who else? Op City. Up, Op City. How about Up Nest? How about Open Door? Open Door right now, just so you know, in Phoenix, where you're looking at uh, out there, they've got 10% of the market right now for listing inventory. Open Door. If you don't know what that stuff is, look, it's coming. So here's what you need to know about Columbus. We are now the 14th largest metropolitan area in the United States. Every big tech company out there is starting, and they basically start with the biggest cities, and they work their way down. 14 is not that far down the list before it comes here. Um, and so you want to know about these things. So, so what's happening? If the commissions, decreasing commissions are coming down, because there are other companies better at generating leads than we are. And as starving agents, we're willing to buy them for a reduced commission, right? 2% of something's better than 3% of nothing is what happens. But what if there was a better way? What if there was a better way? The best source of leads is what? Referrals. Referrals. Coming from your own warm network. What if there was a system that you could plug into your current social media to be in front of the eyeballs, like Jim said, of the millennials and things like that, right? But the problem is this, technology. You got, you're our age. We didn't have the internet when we first started with this, right? So this is all something new. These tech companies, Zillow, UpNest, OpCity, they're better at technology than we are. But what if there was a system that you could have that you could plug and play into your social media? Well, it's totally available. You can have that, but it's very expensive to get as a single agent. We're gonna talk about it a little bit here where there are brokers that are offering it to you to have and to use to plug into your social media and generate leads off your own people and off your people's people. Those are the best source of leads, right out of Facebook. And it's plug and play, point and click, boom, 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 you click and it's in your Facebook and you're generating your own leads at a full commission while probably you're still buying some from these other places, okay? So mentorship and training. What is the dirty secret about real estate? If there's any new, brand new agents on there, we're sorry, but we're gonna tell you some of the dirty parts of real estate. What is it about mentorship and training? If somebody is an experienced agent, are they super excited to give away all their secrets to new agents? No. No, why not? No. Because you're the competitor. You become their competitor. I can't tell you over the years how many people say, so I brought in, we trained, they worked on our team, right? Which is just a short term language for we're going to take some of your commission. That's a team, right? Um, but we would train these people. They would learn everything they needed to know from us, all of our secrets, and then they would take it and compete against us, right? That doesn't have to be how it is. There are brokers out there that will actually compensate the top agents in the country to teach the newer agents. And the reason they'll give away all their secrets is because they're compensated for it. So we're going to talk about that, how that works. It's called a collaborative approach to training and to mentorship, and they will benefit, the top agents will benefit from giving away their secrets. It's an amazing program, and it's an incredible compensation system to make these agents want you to do your best. And that's perfect. As far as decreasing commissions go, here's a big deal. We all know in real estate, it doesn't matter how much you make, it matters how much you keep. 
the new, the new guys figured that out, the ladies figured that out quick. It matters how much you keep because you've got to have an incredible commission split or you're going to be out of business. I, I can't believe it sometimes. I still run the people that are working on 50, 50, 60, 40, and even 70, 30 splits that are out there. It's crazy. There are brokers right now that are offering with, uh, with performance incentives, 100% commission split. You can run it 100% the entire year. And we'll talk about, uh, talk about how that works. This is a big one. This one right here, for every single person who's on the line, according to NAR, is the number one. NAR is who? National, National Association of Realtors. NAR says this is the number one crisis right now for real estate agents. No retirement. What's the end game? How do you ever get out? You gotta have a way for retirement. Here's what we know about real estate agents. They're good at two things. Number one, not saving any money. Number two, not paying their taxes. That's what we know about. <laughs> According to NAR, that's the thing on there, right? So retirement. What if there was a broker that provided you with a retirement plan, but an automated retirement plan? One where you don't have to manage it and track it. It's one that comes in automatically and builds your retirement without you having to monitor it. Would that be something of value? They're out there. And that's something that's new. This is an agent benefit. You know your broker has a retirement plan. You know what your broker's retirement plan is? Say it again. You. You. Right? It's the agents. They're sitting there building their business off the backs of the agents. And they're selling the brokerage. And then sell the brokerage, right. right? So for a lot of agents, they think, okay, my retirement plan is this. I'm going to work as an agent. And then in the future, I'll become a broker. What's wrong with becoming a broker? What are the problems with that? Overhead. Huge overhead. Liability. Yeah, Tons of liability. And the worst, Stacy's favorite. Babysitting. Adult babysitting, no thank you, right? Adult babysitting. So that broker issue isn't the best avenue anymore to retire. The traditional model is changing. What about market fluctuations and cash flow? What about this? Who was uh, in business in 08? What happened in 08 with the real estate market? It, uh, it crushed even the best of us, right? It crushed all of us, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Stacy and I lived off our retirement from 2008 to 2012. Thank you very much. Now we are going to, unless we found something, we were going to be selling houses until when? Until we died, <laughs> basically, <laughs> because we lived off our retirement. It should have right. been growing for the last 10 years, but we had to live off it. So we're starting over from square one. And a lot of agents weren't even that lucky. A lot of them not only went belly up, but it wiped them out completely and they had to go get a what? Job at Macy's. A job. One of our friends we saw working in a butcher shop in Kroger's. Mm -hmm. Wow. It got tough back then, right? So what do you need to fix this? You need a way to build an international business and have cash flow coming in from multiple streams. Here's what we know. The more diversified you are, the better shape that you're in. Here's what we know about real estate markets. Not every real estate market crashed during the crash. Some markets were insulated against it. Just because of the way they were positioned and things like that, they didn't feel the crash. Not everywhere went down. So what if your business was diversified across multiple markets, not just in the United States, but internationally? What if you had business in Australia? What if you had business in Western Europe? Of course, in Canada and the United States, and soon to be where, Stacy? The Caribbean. <laughs> the Caribbean just formalized an MLS for the entire Caribbean, all the islands. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. That can help solve your cash flow when you have an additional stream of revenue based off a leverage system from a company that puts all that in place. If you could find a broker that solved all these issues, right, would it be worth taking a look at? Yes or yes? Yes? Perfect. Well, that's what I'm going to show you today. And I want you, while I'm talking, just see what boxes off here that this checks off. Because let me tell you, Stacey, my story. We, 
We'd bet with the big places. We'd bet with Keller Williams. We'd bet with Remax. We were with the small boutique broker. We were never leaving, ever. We had the best split you could ever have. We had the sweetest deal. No one could beat it. It was impossible until someone showed us this. And that's when we realized we didn't want to leave. We had to leave because I'm a numbers guy. When you show me numbers um, and the math just makes sense, it just makes sense. And that's what we're going to look at today on that. Sarah, will you uh, open, open us up there? I want to show you this. Oh, there you go. Cool. EXP Realty um, is a company we had never heard of. Um, but we took a look at it because we saw the number one REMAX broker in the world, former number one REMAX broker in the world, jumped to EXP Realty. The guy was doing a billion dollars a year. That's a B, a billion dollars a year in residential real estate sales. And he was doing it out of Tennessee. Now, if you're the number one guy in the world, you fly in Dave Leininger's jet, right? Probably come to his house for the holidays. Um, when you're number one in the world, you train on the national stage for their international conventions. I mean, you're the guy. You don't leave unless, what, do you leave because it's a worse opportunity? Uh, Better, right? We also saw the number one uh, KW, oh, his name is Rob Campbell, by the way. We also saw the number one Keller Williams agent in the world leave. Number one in the world for seven or eight, was it seven or eight years in a row? I was the last, uh, eighteen years, I was the last 18 years, seven. Seven of the years, the number one person in the world left, came here. Number two Coldwell Banker agent came here. We saw all these top people jump and we're like, we better look because we weren't doing a billion dollars in sales, right? So we decided, let's take a peek at it. So this is what we were showing. Number one, this is the guy right here, Glenn Sanford. Glenn, um, he was uh, in the internet. He'll tell you right now if he talks to you. He was the, uh, he's a computer geek turned real estate person. Why is that important to you? Because well, can we all agree technology is taking over with real estate? It's more important now to be a techie. All these 30 under 30 people that are having massive success, it's because they're all good at doing uh, technology. And so what he did is uh, he was with a major brokerage before. They don't want us to say the name, so I won't. But he left in 2009 and came on to ESP Realty because they had some differences of opinions. See, his opinion was this. Partner with the agents and provide them all the tools they need to succeed, but don't necessarily sell it to them. There's our brokers out there that have good tools, but they sell it to you. They charge you thousands of dollars to be a part of that. And one of the things that he wanted to work with was a lead gen system, a system to provide leads. Here's what he knows. Put the leads in the hands of the agents. You'll help them with decreasing commissions, help them lead generate their own leads. And we'll talk about how that works in a second. And so he started the first cloud-based agent-owned brokerage called EXP Realty back in 2009. 2009, 10 years in business, and none of us had ever heard of it. It's crazy, right? It's actually started out in, on the West Coast in Washington, and the way our company grows is not really with agent recruitment, we're more into agent attraction. A friend who's in real estate shares it with a friend, and we share the opportunity, and what you've seen over the years is, well, it's 2018 there, is that it's growing like crazy. In fact, uh, Inman, if you study Inman, they uh, voted us with the Innovator Award for Broker Owner. And we also became listed on the NASDAQ in 2018. So one of the problems with not having retirement is the fact that you don't have any ownership in the company. Mr. Sanford made it so that all of us as agents are part owners. I don't know if you understand how important that is. But Stacy and I understand it from doing this since 1997 is that basically all we ever held was a real estate job. It was great, we made great money. But we were constantly on to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. There was never any ownership left over. Being an owner, by simply selling real estate, you earn shares of stock in the company, we'll talk about that in a second, and you have something left over at the end, something to retire on, something to will to your family. That's very exciting stuff. The growth has been explosive. Uh, as you've seen right here, you can see how we're taking off and why is that important, you'll see in a second. When a company is launching like ours is and growing in agent growth, 
you can jump on and you can ride the proverbial wave. And that's where we're at right now. Our business model is simple. I just want to say something about that. Yeah, go ahead. Back to that slide. Yeah. Someone reminded me, it was actually my the boutique broker that we worked for right before we made this jump. It's a very good friend of mine, RJ Edwards. He does mostly commercial. They allowed us to do our residential business out of there. And he reminded me the other day, because he's right now working all of his agents on how we can bring his whole broker and deliver to EXP. We were talking, and I said, you know, we're still having a little bit of a challenge of who's EXP, because it's been a West Coast company that's coming this way. He goes, don't you remember? He goes, because him and I started at KW at the same time in 2005. He goes, when Greater Columbus, Nick Gordon, and Cindy and all them recruited us, we were the only Puerto Rico's office. No one knew who Puerto Williams was. In 2005, we had the, we got that Keller who? I had totally forgot about that. Because there's such a monstrosity now worldwide. I had totally that blew my mind. I'm like, you're right. We had to overcome because we weren't green that. Keller who? And so this is where this makes sense. And as far as I would talk a little bit about the, what Keller did in their first 20 years compared to our first 10 years. So it took 10,000 agents is what they call the defining mark for a company and when they become a household name and when they become solid. They're no longer considered a startup. C21, CBKT, Remax, KW, every one of those brokers that are now household names, right? Took more than 20 years to hit the 10,000 age apart. We did it in nine. Nine years, in half the time. And that right there has made us, according to NAR, the fastest growing real estate company in the history of real estate. Here's the beautiful part if you're sitting in this room or if you're watching this right now. None of the agents you know in the uh, uh, the Realty Association meetings that you go to or anything like that, none of them have ever heard of it. None of them know what I'm getting ready to show you right now. And so because of our compensation plan and our incentive plan, if you're one of the first to jump in and ride the wave, it's great. Like if you think about Keller Williams, if you had been there at the very beginning and rode the wave, where would you be now? That's what we're looking at with this. And I'm gonna show you why that's even better. That was a great point, Stacey, on that. So our business model is this, innovation. East Bay Realty is innovating the real estate brokerage space because we can all agree, technology changes everything. Look what happened with Blockbuster Video, right? Netflix changed that. How about big box stores, who changed that? Amazon, right? Same thing with traditional real estate brokerage is gonna happen. Cloud-based brokerages are going to take over and be the norm. And why is that? Because typical franchises have costly overheads. They require a franchise fee and a desk fee. We don't have any of those. No desk fees, you can work from anywhere, no franchise fees. Most of the brokerages are charging a 6% franchise fee that you're paying. And they just sprinkle it on there like it's no big deal. 6% off of every deal that you do. We don't have that. Um, you're also locally combined with a traditional brokerage. Um, with us, we have an international collaboration because it's cloud-based. The growth incentives, look, for you to introduce other agents typically to your brokerage, they don't really have a great incentive plan for you to grow it. Here, we have an incredible plan that I'm gonna show you that's gonna tie into your cash flow issue and also gonna tie into your retirement issue and also your decreasing commissions. You're gonna love what I'm gonna show you. And of course, limited technology and support. Here's what we know. Traditional brokerages are spending so much money just to keep the doors open and to keep the lights on, they can't keep up with technology. See, if you do what we did and get rid of all of this costly stuff, we can do a cloud-based environment with live training going on, 20 plus hours a week of live training. You can learn from the best of the best. We were on the other day with a woman that does $100 million a year in production. That's something to point out too. Like in our market, we've plateaued. Like we've been in the market for 22 years. No one, you know, Sandy Rains is not opening her playbook to show me how to get to 100 million a year. You know, we've kind of plateaued. And so, one thing that we've taken in this company, based on your performance, their goal is to keep you going up with whether you want to do 100 houses, 100 million. So the people they put you with, we do live training where I can talk to you. I'm like, I mean, I'm a little avatar in my real <laughs> world, but it's me, you know. Um, I mean, I'm getting trained with people that if I paid for it, because I paid for the coaching for a year, I'd be spending, I mean, five figures easily a year for the training, and they are just opening their playbook and helping us. No, it's by me. 
Yeah, but welcome so much. I was in a and meeting yesterday. Uh, they said that uh, Bold through uh, it's called Bold, one of the trains with one of the big brokerages here in town was four grand. Four thousand dollars to pay for training. We're going right. So ours is included. You can get on it. It's live anytime. We have real time <laughs> support. I don't know about in a traditional brokerage when you see it, but when the accountant goes on a cruise, right, heading out, uh, you can't get your questions answered on that for a week until they get back. Or the IT person is out sick. With us having everything in the cloud, you can access them anytime from anywhere, and it's great. And you have the best of the best talent out there helping you. This right here is big, international collaboration. Look, can we all agree that the internet has made the world a smaller place? How great is it that you can have business on other continents and be growing for you? And you can do that with a cloud-based brokerage. And of course, powerful equity opportunities, this stock program, our revenue share program, where we share back the profits. I'm gonna show you in a second here how all this costly overhead right here, since we've eliminated that, we're putting that back in the pockets of the agents. The reason you have to pay such a costly split to your broker is because they gotta keep the lights on. But if we get rid of that and put it back in your pockets, would that be a good thing? Yes, right? And then of course, our stock program that we have um, to give you ownership in the company so something's left over at the end. So there we go again, no desk fees work from anywhere. We got rid of the brick and mortar costs no expensive leases, and we can invest in agent support and technology, paperless transactions, and instant access to training and support. 30 hours of live training uh, each week that you can get on, but this is the best. Learn from the experts all about this, sales and listings, lead generation, social media, CRM, and technology tools. I'm gonna give you a quick one real quick here on lead gen. I was on with a woman the other day that taught how to use our lead gen system and get your lender to pay for the market. Did you catch that? Use our system that comes with EXP and get the lender to pay for the market. I've already got three lenders that have signed up with us and are off and running on right now, and we can show you how that works, okay? And then also there's an archive of recorded sessions where somebody likes your stuff recorded. Quick on-demand support services. Our support teams are running from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, your broker probably doesn't have that that's running on there. The international collaboration part, this is important. You can build organizations across states and provinces with one nationwide cap. So I've got agents that are saying, look, I uh, have a license down here in Florida. I've got a license in Ohio, and I want to work both places, right? People that want to snowbird. You can do that, and you have one cap, one brokerage. You don't have to join separate brokerages because you're in different states. You're Phoenix. If you want to have your license in Phoenix and Ohio, you can do that and you're under one brokerage. That's a big deal for agents as we become more and more mobile and start working in different, different locations. Okay? This is right here, your answer to not having a retirement. That's the NASDAQ uh, stock ticker, EXPI, stands for EXP International. But here's what's great. By simply going out and selling a home, you earn shares of stock. When you cap out, you earn shares of stock. When you share our information with another agent and they join and they put you as the sponsor, you're gonna earn shares of stock for that. We also have what's called the Icon Agent Award. If you wanna get out there and be a hustler and a producer, you can earn up to $16,000 in stock upon the achievement of that production goal becoming an icon agent. Why don't you just show you on half the stuff? Yeah, there's a slide on it. All right. Yep. Good deal. And our agent yeah. equity program, I'm gonna let Stacy do the presentation next we're, time. We're out there. <laughs> and then our uh, our agent equity program is this. You can buy up to five percent out of every transaction you can buy stock with a twenty percent discount. Now think about that. You can put your retirement on autopilot and you're buying stock at twenty percent off. So you're in a 20% equity position right there on the stock before it goes up. And typically what we see in, in stock is as a company grows, what typically happens with the stock? It what? It goes up, right? Typically. And our age account is growing exponentially right now, and we're expecting the stock to do that, right? Um, for people that you introduce to the company, when they go out and produce, 
okay? You can earn up to $2,800 annually for every person you personally introduce to eXp. That is called the revenue share. That is your cash flow issue right here. So just to be clear, you're not earning any money out of that agent's pocket. This is the company giving you money back that normally would have been spent on all that expensive overhead. They're giving that money back to you up to $2,800 per agent, unlimited. You want to sponsor 100 people? That would be how much per year? 280. Per, and that's an annual thing, not the one. That's annually. Per, per year. 280 grand. You can make up that. You want to sponsor that many agents who are out there in production. Hey, what's up, Big John? On top of that, we also have, you can get paid on tier two. Those agents that you sponsor, you think they'd be interested in some extra cash flow and also in some retirement and taking care of market fluctuations. Yes or yes? Yes? Yep. Okay. So they would sponsor some people. Well, you would also earn revenue share off of those people. And it actually goes on seven levels or seven tiers, as we say. You're going to introduce people. Everybody you introduce goes on your tier one. But what we expect is that those people you introduce are also interested in the same thing, building residual income, creating revenue share, and having money that comes in every single month based on agents. And those agents know people who know people who know people. It's a simple process that's been running with Keller Williams for 32 years now, 33 years. And it's made them the number one broker in the world and will make us the number one broker in the world here very soon. Yes. Profit share. When you get paid off profit share, it works like this. You have revenue minus expenses leaves over what? Profit. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Off a profit share program, they take half the profit and it goes to the ownership group. They're the ones who are the, the owners. The other half of the profit is sprinkled amongst the agents who produced that month. It was a great program because in the past, agents didn't have any profit at all coming back from the company. And so it was great. And it made Keller Williams the number one company in the world because of that. But there was a flaw. And the flaw was this. You had all the revenue, but what happens when the expenses were too high? There's no profit. There's no profit. So ESP came in and flipped it up, flipped the script. We pay off of revenue. We pay off the top versus off the bottom. Because what are our expenses? There is no expenses, right? The cloud doesn't have any. The internet doesn't cost anything. We don't have all these buildings. How many franchises, building franchises and buildings are there? Eight now here. Eight in Columbus. Each one of those has their own team leader, their own broker, their own MCA, their own all these bloated salaries, plus a building, plus a lease, plus all those utilities that eat up all the profit. So we pay off the revenue. Yeah, this is a this is just long slide, but it covers a lot more too. The mentorship and the training. If you think about it, and there's a reason that we have four different states represented on Zoom meeting right now, and why we talk about going international and going global. Because Jim and I, after 22 years, were tired of cracking doors. I'm tired of coming to it in minus 30 degrees of coming on um, And so this is one of the routes that we focused on. Because when someone, when we bring someone in, no matter what tier they fall on, I have a very vested interest to make sure they're selling business. You know what I mean? That they're, they're productive and that they're capping because we actually benefit from it too. And, uh, and that, comes in, that, that check comes in once a month no matter what. That's this right here. The top agents are incentivized to help the newer people be the best they can be. There's a, there is a incentive plan for the top agents to mentor and train the newer agents where in other companies, they may not really want you to make it, right? Also, here's what I want you to know. There's a saying that says this, a rising tide floats all boats. All boats. What we know is this, the better you do, the better you do, the better you do, the better the stock goes. Mm -hmm. I'm a shareholder, you're a shareholder, we're in the same team. We're all owners of this company, we're all looking forward to growing it, increasing the revenue that comes in, the number of sales, and so we help each other. We help each other attract other agents to the business, we help each other produce more revenue, and some of us 
like John back there, are actually using uh, extra leads he has to refer leads out that he can't deal with, refer them out to people to join his organization. And so it's another revenue stream for him that comes in off of that. Just to be clear, this is not a team set up. We're not taking anybody's money on this. You're an independent contractor, but we work together in a collaborative experience. We're business partners, is what it is. It's great. This is what Stacy was talking about the ESP world earlier. It's an avatar. You go into the cloud, and literally you will sit there, and you can raise your hand and ask live questions. The importance of being live, where you can get your things answered, it looks like a video game, but it's very high tech, where you can go, you have an accounting question, you go, you pull your phone out, your iPad, your computer, you literally go straight into someone in accounting, you take a ticket, and you talk to somebody face-to-face -face will help you with your issue. You need a marketing question, an IT question, it's all there in the cloud, and it is better support than I've ever had any work which I've ever been a part of, because they're always there. It's great, okay? Um, you can do meetings up there, anything you want, from anywhere around the world, and it's incredible. So we have lots of different tools online that we won't get into. The main one I want to talk about is the lead gen, just so you know, all these other paperless systems that we have, are all plug and play. You do not have to be a genius. You'll literally have an email that'll go, here's step one, do this, step two, do this, and they'll walk you through it with a video showing you how to do it. But this is big. This right here, besides retirement, is probably leads, is the number one issue agents have. No leads equals what? No money. Selling houses, we can all agree we don't sell houses. Houses sell themselves. We basically market to find a ready, willing, and able seller or buyer and then we project manage the project from there, right? All the moving parts. So how do you generate your own leads? Well, first of all, you have to have a CRM, a powerful CRM to manage your leads and incubate those leads while you're busy, see ball, get ball, right? You've got somebody who's ready to go now. The last thing you want to do is have somebody fall through the cracks that's gonna do business six months from now. How do you do that? You have a robot that takes care of them and cultivates them until they're ready to go. Our program works incredible like this. It's provided to you at no additional cost, and it's gonna integrate the, your listings with your own WordPress website, and then we have an in-house lead generation program that we have. This system is, uh, for those of you who've seen it before, is based on conversion. Conversion spelled with a K, K-U-N-V-E-R-S-I-O-N. It's called now, it's adopted to uh, EXP, it's called KB Core. KB Core. And the system is plug and play where you can generate leads and plug them right into your social media. And now you're generating leads from people you know and that people that they know, which is as good as a warm referral. Because when they click on your lead generation, lead capture site, they're just gonna see that, oh my gosh, my friend Dan is friends with them already. And they feel better, more comfortable in that somebody they know knows who you are. This is a local lead gen platform that will show you how simple it is to get it set up and get it running. All your marketing and branding is done for you. It's literally plug and play. You enter your information, it spits out everything that you need. So uh, here's how you get started. This is the slide Stacy was talking about right here. To get started, it's $149 to get started. What that includes is a thousand business cards, it's also going to include uh, your name tag, your little uh, realtor pin, and then also uh, some folders and things like that to get started. Um, that will also include your first month's fees, everything included in that, wrapped up for your entire first month. From there, your monthly fee is this, $50 a month for tech and $35 a month for your education fee. One of the great parts about this is when you do your first transaction with EXP, you'll be awarded stock that covers a big chunk of that when you do your first deal with us, right? And then these two fees right here are included on every transaction you do. Stacey, you wanna tell your... Uh, uh, well, well, what we did was, and I'm sure everybody... In and I want you to hear John's solution to it, but go ahead. <laughs> Where we are, our, from Keller Williams to Remax for our small boutique, it kept going up, but basically our broker was charging on per deal for the fee. And so literally, I just kept changing. We have our addendum already made. I changed the logo, changed the amount when it was different. And we were currently at our small boutique at 199 a month. When we get over here, I asked him, I said, you know, can we still charge that, even though the fee is only 65 per transaction here? And they said, absolutely, and the access just goes to you guys. 
So for us, that covered our monthly. We do well more than one, one a month. So that covered not only the 65, but the 85 monthly fee and still had excess commission. So I get some people looking at that and go, oh, well, I got those monthly fees. They may not have that now. They have a smaller boutique that does this per transaction, but it's more than public figure for corporate transactions. So check this out, what John taught me yesterday. This is one thing I love about EXP is learning from other agents. John taught me something really incredible uh, tweak to the $249 fee that you charge to a buyer or seller. Go ahead for buyers. What do you do, John? Yeah, so yes, uh, we were having a conversation with a couple of uh, agents we were introducing to the EXP team yesterday. You know, they mentioned, well, I, I had to charge the broker fee. And I feel like when you're negotiating with a buyer or a seller, that can be a deal breaker. Um, obviously, we write closing costs in a lot of contracts that there's seller paid fees. You can also put, you know, um, a buyer or seller will contribute to closing costs and any other allowable broker fee. You know, so you can let them know, hey, the seller actually will be paying that fee for you. You're not going to have to pay So he puts it, and so it's covered in when he writes his contract in the uh, buyer's seller paid closing costs, and it's a non issue. It's a, it's a non, non starter. Yeah, I think every broker's taking a broker fee right now. Yeah, they, those weren't, uh, they weren't on it. So uh, our split is an 80-20 commission split with a cap of $16,000. So after that, you earn 100% of your commission for the remainder of the anniversary year. Stacey started in September with this. It's capped out on the program, and we're running at 100% now for the rest of spring and summer that quick. Big John just did his first two transactions with us. You, you're more than, uh, more than a third of the way through your cap already. So that's going to work out great on that. And one of the great parts about it is this, is as the icon agent, whoops, remember the icon agent, what it paid back in stock? What was the amount? Do you remember? 16000 16, Once you cap out, if you do another 20 transactions past that, in other words, you're in production, they'll give you $16,000 back in company stock. Now, what does that mean? How much did you operate at then for the year? Legal. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, zero. Zero percent paid in. Plus, because you're also getting the rev share, right? And you're also getting the other company stock that you're in. So when somebody says, why well, operate? I'm on a 100% split. Sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. That's all you're getting. Because we're actually, with all of this going on, you're actually better than a 100% split if you produce. And one of the great parts about it for newer agents is we don't have special deals for anyone. I love this about ESP, it's totally transparent. We were the broker before where some agents got to be on a 60-40, some were 70-30, some were 80-20, some were 90-10. Everybody's always wondering, what do you got, what do you got? It's not like that here. You're 80-20 until you cap out. What's it take to cap out? You're earning 3% commissions, 2.6 million in sales. That's it, okay? These are all the awards uh, that we've gotten. Uh, tons and tons of awards. Everybody's recognizing us, but uh, we are mover and shaker in the industry. And to become a shareholder with the company, you can talk to the person that uh, invited you here. But it's very, very so simple. Just to point out, to you, this company awards you for attracting agents to the business. And that 16,000 cap is coming into play. What we're seeing personally, because our son is 18, so he's getting ready to go to Hondos. He has no intention of staying in Ohio. Wherever he wants to set foot, he wants to be somewhat transient, which the millennials want to be today. You know what I mean? They want to travel light, travel nice, travel with a lot of fancy stuff. But they, so he, he plans on getting licensed. He loves Colorado. He loves Florida. And he plans on starting a business everywhere. He has one cap at 16,000, no matter where he does business across the United States, it's one cap. And the millennials are thinking that way. So if you're thinking about rev sharing, team building, and stuff like that, the millennials are not locked into one state to win. And this is huge for the millennials. Right. The technology is second to none, which is huge with millennials. Um, and they have way more energy than us. <laughs> so that's exactly, I mean, we, and we've been linked and stuff. Our LinkedIn is going crazy. Jim and I were recruited off of LinkedIn. So literally, our, the people who went to meet with us, the XP was really, I think, we keep saying no one's hearing about it. People are hearing about it now. Let's, it's uh, really changed the last eight months. Let's talk about recruiting. Because recruiting is a, an ugly word. It scares more agents than anything else to say I'm not a recruiter. And what I tell people that is I say, good, because most people don't like to be recruited. They'd rather be attracted. And so what we're doing is we're offering information to people and then letting them make their own decision. 
If you chase people, they do what? Run. They run. Okay. Let me show you what attracts us. that. First of all, the inventory issue with too many agents, right? There's too many agents, not of inventory. Did we solve that issue? Yeah. Right? Because the fact that there's a lot of agents helps you build a bigger organization. I say bring on all the agents they've got. We're just going to keep growing the organization to get bigger and bigger. So we, we, we fix that. The leads issue. Do we have something to solve that? Okay. Your own leads that you have. The mentorship and training program. The best agents in the world are going to be at your disposable, disposal to be trained. How about decreasing commissions? Did we come up with another source of cash flow and also a lead gen program to help with the decreasing commissions? Yes, right? No retirement? We fix that. With what? The stock plan, right? Market fluctuations like in spring or the winter when things aren't happening here. Did we fix that with the revenue share program? Yes, because if you build a global business, when it's not cooking here in Columbus, guess where it is cooking? South in Florida next week. Tampa <laughs> and also in Houston. Stacey and I got a big fat rev share check in this month, four days ago, from work that was done in Houston and down in Tampa from our organization. You got your first rev share check, didn't you? How much was your first rev share check? $316 off of one transaction, or was it two? Uh, I think it was just one. Just one transaction. That's all, friend, agent friend she had of hers in Houston, closed the deal in the month of December, and she got a rev share check off of that. The trends in the real estate industry, Did we? are we on top of that with innovation yeah. and technology? Of course, we're pouring all of our money into that that normally we would be spending on other things. Let me show you what got Stacy and I attention as far as this recruiting thing. Will you uh, turn off the uh, screen there for me, sir? Jim, how long have you been your wife been in this? Yeah. September is when we started recruiting for it. Stacey uh, had, I don't know, 30 some listings with our past brokers. We had to weed them out before she could jump. And so we made the move then. You have the one of two. I know what you're going to do, but why don't we actually do the calculator? Can you make it come on over there? So here's what I want to show you. We have a system called the 10 who get 10 system. I want to break it down for you, agent attraction, as to how simple we make this for you to attract people versus going out and trying to recruit. Recruiting just scares agents, it paralyzes them. I can't recruit them. Here's what we do. We have a system of events to share the opportunity. We have two webinars a week, each week, they're on Sundays and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. They're live webinars. This presentation is on the webinar. You can put people on there and it's a live Q&A. You can bring them on, they can watch it from their own home. We also do one live event. It's a luncheon. It varies, it moves around a little bit, but it's usually at noon during the week, okay? So that's three opportunities per week for you to leverage and have someone else who's been trained to do the presentation, present the business for you, okay? So that's three times a week. And let's just say you're going to work 50 weeks out of the year. You're gonna take two weeks of vacation, okay? That is how many opportunities to share the business? Three times 50 is 150 opportunities, okay? If you invited just one person to each one of these each week, is there a chance they're always going to show up? No, right? So let's say you invited them and you had one person for each one of these. But out of those three opportunities in the week, you only had one person show up. 50 weeks times one would be how many people saw the opportunity? That's 50, right? So what we call it would be 50 presentations. Now that's not you doing the presentations, that's someone else. You're just inviting them to get some information. We've got really cool ways to do that with different videos and different things like that. If 50 people saw what you saw today in a year, is there a possibility that two of them would say, yes, I want a retirement, I want a lead gen program, I want revenue share, I want mentorship? Two out of 50. Is that yes? Okay. So that's 48 no's, two yeses, all right? So two people say yes, 
they join with you, okay? How many people here are still be selling real estate five years from now? Okay, let's do that times five years. Two yeses times five years. That's 10 people on what we call your front line, okay? Nothing crazy. We're talking about recruiting two people a year. Basically just sharing opportunities. So that's 10 people, right? 10 realtors. If you have 10 realtors on your first tier, okay, let me write that first tier. Who has a person who has a great memory and remembers what tier 10, tier one pays? 2800 $2, if they're a capper. Everybody remember what a capper is? How much in production? 16,000 into the, but it's how much production? 2.6 million in production at 3%. Okay. So what is two times 2800? What is that? 10, I'm sorry, 10 times 2800. 28,000. Okay. That's on your tier one. Those are just people over five years. You, two people a year. Getting started. It's going to be a lot higher than that, but let's just say that's all it is. Because I want to dumb this thing down to make it as conservative as possible. Is it possible that those 10 people also want to earn stock, generate a revenue share, and could also leverage the exact same events that they were recruited via? Is it possible? Yeah. Could they do the exact same thing? Two people a year for five years. So if these 10 each got 10, what would that be on tier two? But what, oh, if 10 people get 10, how many people are on your second tier? 100. It's 100, right? This is over five years ago. Same thing. How much did tier two pay? 3,200. Somebody's memorized their. Uh, what is 100 times 3,200? 320,000. Millennials are good with the math. What are those two added together? By the way, there's there's five more tiers. We're not going to get into those. 3,000 for how much? 348,000. <laughs> <laughs> 348000 basically $1,000 a day in residual income while you're just out selling. Here's the key. All you're doing is selling real estate. Maybe going to a realtor meeting now and then, right? Gene's had great success with uh, going to the Westerville Realtor Association's meeting and just getting people from the comfort of their own home to jump on a webinar on a Sunday or Wednesday night or come get some free lunch and take a look. And you don't have to have massive turnout. I mean, if you just had out of 150 total opportunities, you only had 50 presentations, you only had to have two say yes a year for five years to have that turnout. Can you show that? Would that be worth it? What's that? Can you hook your picture up and show that the cell thing? Yeah. Like our price point, our like what our Sarah, will you turn the uh, overhead back on? This is what sold us. How many people in here like math? Yes, my name Yeah. Right. <laughs> more realistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it, it makes you more motivated for sure. Yeah. Well, you would dumb it down to where we can either, I, I like showing that's not as half that for someone that's selling 1.5 million in real estate or 200. All right. So, this is just a simple Excel spreadsheet. And basically, what we're looking at here on this, there we go. 
Better call the warranty company. My heart works. What if? What if you went out and you're recruiting agents, and let's say the agents you recruit, not a single one of them could ever sell more than six houses in a year. And let's say the average sales price in Columbus is 225. Let's say we don't want to go with that. Let's say we want 200 was the average price. And with that, we know we all like to get 3%. Well, let's just say that's not realistic anymore. They're getting cut down to two and a half. So let's go. NAR says the average national commission right now is 2.75 and plummet. That's on its way down. Okay. Right? That would be, now this is, I'm talking about every person you ever recruited. This is all they ever did. That would be a whopping 1.2 million in production. That's not a full time agent, right? Because that's somebody, they couldn't even survive on that. Be thirty six thousand less than thirty six thousand dollars a year, actually thirty three thousand dollars a year in commission, right? Less than three grand a month. They're not going to survive on that. So this is a very part time agent who probably has a job on the side, right? That's earning this. And let's say you went out and let's say over five years you got crazy and recruited three agents a year. We use two as the model here, but let's just say. You were a little better than two out of 50. Let's say you got three out of 50. You can be able to do more than that, which they on social media. But let's just say that five years, it took you recruited 15 agents. Is that doable for five years? Yeah. Yes. Does your brain allow you to think that? Okay. But let's say those 15 you recruited, they were terrible recruiters. They didn't follow the system, they didn't put anybody on the webinars and do anything like that. They were only able to recruit. Two agents. That's it. Not per year, total in five years. And let's say those agents were only able to do the same thing. They were only able to recruit two agents. And, and those agents were only able to recruit two also. In five years. In five years. Does that sound possible? Mm -hmm. It's a low number, right? Incredibly low um, production. These are so many people who probably aren't even trying in a five year period. Those are just their friends asking, hey, where are you at? I need a place to hang my license. Okay? Which that'll happen for you. This is what that payout would be. That's a right year in five years. Per year. Not in five years. This is every year. Right, right. In five, after five years, you form that team. Yeah, 165 years. That's an extra. What is that per month? Fourteen thousand a month. In extra income, all the while, here's the key: all the while, all you're doing is going out and selling real estate, not doing anything different, except when your friend asks you, "Hey, what do you think of the ESP Realty?" You say it's awesome. You want to get some information on it? Got a couple of different opportunities for you to see it, and you invite them to take a look at it, and they're going to hear about it more and more. Here's the beautiful part about this none of the agents you know right now have any idea anything about this. Okay, so that that is that. I want to give uh, Tom a chance to yeah. put the lights on. Are you and Stacy the first? One of the first in the entire state. For those of you who are watching, uh, I don't know your state's numbers, but I know for a fact uh, the number of ESP agents in the entire state of Ohio. Are you ready? Drum roll. We learned it at the Christmas party. Sorry, the holiday party. 300, 378. Now, are you ready for this? How many agents are in the state? Tom probably knows. He's probably talked to all of them with this whole morning. 35,000. That, that is. It was 30, 38 and change, right? And one in four of them resided within about 50 miles of where we sit right now. One in four, a quarter of the agents sit within 50 miles of where we're at right now. Yeah. Even I thought we were we, we have a, a video that we 
we like to send out because it's just the most relevant. But as you know, I get I'm like to get to the point. And so this one's like six minutes long, but we can't get the public to put a disclaimer on it now because they released it in like April of last year. Yeah. So what eight months ago? It said eight thousand agents. It's already doubled. Like it. We've doubled right. our agent count in that amount of time. We're on that Since the video was cool. we have the ten thousand. I mean, it's just the number of opportunities we've got. Like, so the entire state of Ohio, we have less than one tenth of one percent market share here, and it's going to grow. We have what people want. We have the ability to do retirement. We have a lead gen plan. We have the best mentorship on the planet. We have the most competitive split there is, and we have an ownership plan where you own something at the end of the day. That is what we're attracting people with. And then the other thing that it does is it brings on top allied partners. Mm -hmm. We mentioned this earlier in the beginning, but it's very important since we're recording this, uh, we're gonna be saying this to some of the agents that didn't make it. It's important that you build a good partnership with your allied partners. You've gotta have a good title company. You've gotta have a good, uh, great lender, right? You've gotta have a good home inspector. It is very important to generate referral business. Will you kill the uh, light force there, sir? Thanks. Um, it is very important that you have a good home warranty company because your referrals are going to come after the sale. And you have something going wrong with the house. We all know there's no such thing as a perfect house. There is going to be something that goes wrong with it. And if you don't have a good home warranty, that'll kill you because they're coming back and they're looking at you. All they saw was that big fat commission check you got and every problem they have is with them. So we're super proud to be partnered with Tom. He sponsored our lunch today with uh, Choice Home Warranty. He's going to come up and talk to you a little bit about it. And for you buyer's agents, he's going to give you a script today on how to get the home warranty put into the contract. Because we know a lot of times the seller says what? The seller says we already have one in place. Tom's gonna to give you the script to be able to get that because you wanna control who the home warranty department is. Because if it's a crappy home warranty and you accept it and you negotiated that contract, they're coming back to you. And he's gonna tell you uh, why his is superior. And uh, please, Tom, thank well, you for lunch you. today. Come on up to the front. Give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, if you, uh, Tom Nichols, personal more. You know, you said something that I always kind of make a joke about, but it's really, I think it's true. The only folks that don't know they're buying a used house are the people buying the used house. Right, right, right. And so it is important to help them understand that things are going to go wrong in that first year. And they're likely to have uh, spent most of the money in their bank account in the process of buying that two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar home. So. In that first year, that first couple of years of home ownership, a lot of new things are going to um, occur to them maybe for the first time. Or maybe if it, even if it's on their second or third home, they kind of forget about those first few years of home ownership. And that those furnaces and air conditioners and water heaters, they might give out. And what happens then? Somebody's going to have to pick up the, the cost of it. And that's where a company like a, well, a home warranty company, whether it's Choice or another one, can really help and defray costs and limit their exposure. We're promoting choice. And it's your job <laughs> as realtors to limit their exposure in any way, shape, or form you can. And so a relationship with a, with a choice home warranty is a, is a just smart business practice for you. Um, and one of the, the great things about, that I've been finding working with EXP agents, like the Lambrights in this room and other folks here in Central Ohio, and quite frankly, around the state of Ohio, uh, because I've been aware of EXP for a decade. Yeah, it's been around for a decade. Um, and it just caught fire in the last oh, 18 yeah. months, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now we're doing business with folks like you all over the country that came from somewhere else. Just like that <laughs> came from somewhere else. Uh, uh, but you are a technology forward company. And that's really what we are. We are a technology company that sells home warranties and we're everything that we do is really designed to utilize technology to speed the process expedite the claims make things happen as rapidly as possible to put smiles on as many people's faces as we possibly can my job is to use real estate agents to connect with homeowners but ultimately our clients are the same they're the homeowners the people who buy these houses and quite frankly the way we make money in, in a lot of ways mirrors the way you make money it's residual income but it's going to cost us just about every nickel and dime that comes to us that first year. That that money that's put into the uh, that usually the seller pays, 
that the buyer accepts and agrees to and gets. Mm -hmm. All of that money is going to go towards that uh, cost of acquisition of that homeowner and, and fixing things when they break. We're only going to make money if we keep them happy enough to get them to renew that warranty for year two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. So it's very important to me to make sure that we do our job and make sure your clients are happy and satisfied. So ultimately, whatever you think of me, I promise you this, my goal is to get a yes. And so everything I'm ever going to tell you or your clients when you call upon me is going to be based on how can we get from where we are to a happy place. And so I will be blunt and brutally honest with you all along the way about how to get there. And I know there are many questions about how we do things, how warranty companies do things, and I am an open book about it. You will never have any surprises with me and my company about how we get you to a yes, because it ultimately, like I said, the longer your clients are our clients, the more money we make, and that's really why we're all doing this. Um, what do you want me to talk about, quite frankly? I so mean, for buyer's agents, a lot of time, buyer's agents, when they write an offer, yeah. uh, the listing agent has already said, we know how to get installed as a listing agent, but yeah. as a buyer's agent, how do they get in the contract? What would be good lingo for them when they're negotiating with a listing agent? So are you asking me to kind of uh, uh, extrapolate what we were talking about yes, the other day? Yes, exactly. And Boy, I, explain I was really good when I said that. <laughs> I, I, I can replicate it. But I think the, the basic premise is, how do we, uh, you have, and, and if I can go back, you had a situation where the agent on the other side of the deal was, or the seller's agent, the seller's seller's agent, agent yeah. was really pushing a warranty yep. and, and demanding a warranty. And, and it's really confusing to you and confusing to me why it matters so much to the seller, which warranty is in place for the home that the buyers want to mm -hmm. occupy and not them. What's, what's, what's in it for them? Right. That's a good question. There's plenty of potential ulterior motives for that, but ultimately, I guess what I'm addressing is what, what we were talking about the other day, which is, hey, it's your client. You should really, you're, you're, you're an advocate for that. Right. And if you have a comfort level, a confidence in a home warranty, a title company, a plumber, a yard maintenance, but whatever it is, then it's your job to advocate for them. Now, it might end up being the negotiation takes you to a different place, but you certainly should start with the premise that to get my 3%, 2.75%, whatever it is, I'm going to give you the best I've got. And if that is choice on warranty, then that's what I'm going to advocate for. And as I'm negotiating, as I'm you negotiating with that seller's agent, that's exactly what I'm saying. Hey, look, this is my, my client, my client and my confidence lays with this warranty company. Therefore, that's the one we are demanding. And find another, you know, we'll negotiate from, on some other things, but that's where I would start. Does that, does that answer that's, your question? That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. You know, one thing that Tom said made a lot of sense to me was the buyer's going to be the one living there. Right. Right? Right. And so we want a superior home warranty that covers them. What are some of the advantages of this warranty over others? You're not using names of the other companies, sure. but what's the benefits? Well, they're, 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 that's a good question. So there are plenty of good warranty companies out there. There are some that we can argue whether they're a really good one for you or not, but there are certainly different ways to skin the cat. Ultimately, we all are trying to do the same thing, which is uh, provide service, fix things when they break. And on that note, some warranties are only really designed to fix things when they break, but not really provide the amount of money necessary to do replace things when they are no longer fixable. Um, and so it's very important to get to know your sales rep and very important to read the contract, just like you've got, what, a 15-page contract? Right. You've got three or four pages of very fine print. And a lot of it looks the same from a distance, but when you start to look into the details, you can see some very important differences. And one of those things, of course, would be caps. That's a word that, that we use that talks about the maximum exposure that you're going to have on the in the aggregate on the entire warranty. But oftentimes within each category, there are going to be maximums. Some warranty companies, in fact, a lot of warranty companies like ours offer plenty of money to cover these categories, what I call the peach, an acronym for peach, plumbing, electrical, appliances, cooling, and heating. I don't
talking over the camera, so I'm looking. Right. I like it. <laughs> Cameras over there. Peach, but remember that the peach. Peach. I'm trying to find an R so I can say the preach or the, the preach or something like that. But the peach. the peach. Plumbing, electrical appliances, cooling, and heating. And those are. Remember what warns the companies are. They're really mechanical in nature. They fix motors. So furnaces and air conditioners and water heaters and um, the plumbing system, maybe the plumbing system doesn't have a motor, but, and the electrical, those are the things that they focus on. Oh, and appliances that are in the kitchen primarily, but also the washer and dryer. There are certainly other things that warranty companies might involve themselves in, but those are the general uh, uh, categories. And some warranty companies are designed again to fully replace them. Some are designed to just fix them. Um, so make sure you know the numbers, uh, but uh, when you get into the optional items, you can count on this. There's not going to be a full replacement on a well or a roof or a septic system or a pool. Again, they're going to focus on the motors, the well pump, the septic, or the aerator pump, or the, uh, the heat pump for a pool, things like that, not the structure of those items. So always keep that in mind. That might be more likely to be a home insurance issue. In fact, often when I get a call from a homeowner about something like that, after they get done asking me a question or telling me what's going on, I say, before we continue, I, I say, have you called your insurance company? Because you might be better served calling them first and then calling me back. But keep that in mind. We are about fixing motors. Um, what makes us better than most is, again, we put the ball in the court of the homeowner. Of course, we're going to try and control our costs by using our contractors and sending them out. And we have technological ways to get the right contractor to the home as rapidly as possible. Our goal is to have these things started and finished within a 48-hour period. They don't always work out that way, but that is our goal. If we can't do that, or if the homeowner says, hey, we'd rather use our own contractor, there are mechanisms that allow for that to happen. So ultimately, we are all about making sure that the homeowner gets what they want as quickly as it can happen, and then we move along to the next situation. So that's really it in a nutshell. Um, Tom, tell me about the products you have for uh, investors. Who here deals with investors? Tell them about the 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 one for uh, the idea that we talked about that they started with. I was like, that's genius. Uh, for somebody who owns rental properties? Well, really, our, our warranty is set up for anybody uh, that has a home, whether it's uh, being used as a, a, an investment property, rental property, or, or something they're going to live in. But are we talking about uh, multiple years? Or yeah, we were talking about uh, years, like when they're renting their single-family home to yeah. a tenant. It mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense for that investor to put a home warranty on the property. Oh, absolutely. That eliminates well, maintenance calls. On my way to this uh, this meeting today, I got a call from an agent with a, uh, another brokerage who I expect might end up with uh, a different brokerage eventually. But she called and she is a not only a broker and an agent, but she's also a landlord. And she called to say that, that she, had, she has an issue with a, a plumbing issue in one of her properties and just wanted to make sure that the tenant was going to I'll be able to take the call even though their name wasn't necessarily on the on the mortgage and yeah. or on, excuse me on the on the home warranty. And of course, the answer is yes. We're happy to accommodate those situations. So absolutely. In fact, we'll go as far as figuring out ways to keep the tenant from having to be the one who might pony up the sixty-five dollars service call for the United States. So anything we can do to sixty-five instead of a hundred or more for most yeah. Cases. <laughs> Well, just so you know, we're seeing them as high as two hundred dollars with some home warranties. We're seeing them lower with some, but keep in mind, yeah, sometimes get what you pay for. Yeah. So, but but usually they're going up in price. And oh, back to a couple of things that are really important to know about the terms and conditions. So, one is the price on those service call fees is going up, and that is to um, keep them from having to raise their prices. Cost of everything continues to go up. Right. Uh, like houses and 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 uh, every, the only thing going down appears to be the commission, which is yeah. unfortunate. Um, but to to mask that the, or to keep from having to raise prices, a lot of warranty companies are putting some fine print, some terms and conditions there that limit their exposure. Among them, uh, as the cost of 
R22, which is commonly referred to as Freon, right, continues to go up. And I could talk for days about this, but just know this in a year and a half, roughly, I think it's July of next summer, the ability to recharge, even recharge uh, an older system using Freon will go away. So the reason the price of Freon continues to go up is because it can no longer be made but it can be pulled out of old systems. It can be cleaned and, and then used to recharge. But as less of it exists, the cost of it continues to Scarcity. go up. Scarcity. So in order to limit exposure to that, a lot of warranty companies say a couple of things. They might say, we're only going to allow up to a certain amount of money, $10 a pound or a maximum dollar amount, $100 or something like that. So if you have a... A unit that needs to be recharged with three pounds of Freon. It's very common to have a number of 300 or 350 dollars be the cost with your HVAC person, and you might be on the hook even through a warranty company for 300 of that 350 dollars or something like that. So the other thing that warranty companies are doing is saying um, uh, that we just don't cover for recharging or. Or, 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 or anything that regarding refrigerant. And, and that means that when it's time to make a decision about replacing it, if that's a cost that is on you, the homeowner, you might be putting the bill for it, and they're just simply putting a Band-Aid on it. Now listen, first and foremost, we're gonna try and fix things. I'm, I'd be kidding you and lying to you if I told you any different. But if we are the ones who are responsible for that exorbitant cost, if it's our responsibility, and in our case, it is our responsibility, recharging these things is our responsibility, we're going to probably make a very different decision about putting two or three hundred dollars into refrigerant when we could probably buy a new air conditioner for not a whole lot more. And, and whether you know it or not, we buy them for a lot different price structure than you do. Because we buy a lot of them. Right. So that's how we control costs. We control the equipment. The air conditioners and furnaces that go into your houses, we control the relationship with the contractors. So that's how we control costs, and that's how we can move mountains for $550 a year. So that's one thing. Another thing is some warranty companies are starting to put age restrictions into their terms and conditions. And that and, and think about all the how many 10, 12, 14 year old houses do you sell? Yeah. A lot of living we live in one. Guess what those 10, 12, and 14 year old houses have in them? 10, 12, 14 year old. That's right. Clients. They're just young enough where they probably haven't been replaced yet. Yeah. But they're likely to be at or beyond their life expectancy. And that life expectancy is determined by what the manufacturer says it is. And oftentimes on an air conditioner, it's about 10 or 12 years. On a water heater, it's about 10 or 12 years. On a furnace, it might be 15 years, maybe even as much as 18 years. But there are some warranty companies saying that if it's that old, or even if it hasn't reached it, but it's getting close to it, our limita our, there are limitations. So whatever the maximum exposure we have on a younger system does not apply to a slightly older system. And if it's beyond it, well, heck, I don't even know what that means. It's, I've heard different things, but they might not have any obligation to cover anything at all. Some any warranty companies. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. We'll say any questions what, for with that in mind yeah we've had situations where we've had inspections where it's been on our request for remedy yeah. or there's language in the home inspection yeah you know what i mean this is yeah how do home inspections play into all of this right. stuff like right wording or yes. deadly phrases that might be a little yeah so good question so different listen the things i'm telling you are typically dealt with at least one would hope the same way across warranty companies but we're finding more variations on the theme as the pressures to uh, the, the pricing pressures to stay stay competitive continue to increase and so some warranty companies are starting to demand home inspections mm -hmm. and we all I think we can all agree home inspections are everyone here does them right you, you do yeah. them and there are certainly very good ones out there and there are some that you know depending on where you sit on the deal, you might feel that they're a little too intrusive or maybe not intrusive enough. Didn't Ohio legislature just pass um, now that they have to be licensed and bonded? They now. did. Yes. However, and just on a side note on yeah. that, they, that, that there's, that's, that's right, that's happened. 
However, my understanding from some home inspectors that I do have a familiarity with, the likelihood that anything is going to um, uh, happen before 2020 mm. is is pretty slim. There's a lot of stuff that they, they've got to just even form the committee or the or from the government board and all of that. So it's going to take a little while for it to come to whatever it becomes. And, and quite honestly, I think there's a lot of unintended consequences that will result from this either. I don't even know what those are going to be, but it's probably not going to be the panacea that some of us hope it will be. That being said, we do utilize home inspection reports. In our case, we don't require home inspections. However, they can become they can be very valuable. Those and uh, maintenance records can both be very valuable. And I'm going to address your question precisely as we as I talk about this. Home inspections can, in our case, turn a no, when we have to, when we say no for some reason, usually it's a maintenance issue and or a, um, uh, and, and uh, uh, just an, uh, a normal wear and tear, abnormal wear and tear. That's really the basis of it. Something unusual has happened and it just, uh, it breaks down and, and, the ex and, the, and the determination is that it was some sort of pre-existing condition or something that could have been prevented with a little maintenance. Okay, if we say no, and of course the homeowner is going to gripe, and I'm probably going to listen to you as well. <laughs> and you say, "Hey, what's up, Tom?" Tom's very accessible, and I'm going to say, "Well, let's see what else there is." And we're, uh, we're probably I'm going to suggest, and, and our folks in our claims department are going to suggest maybe there's some other information you've got, maybe a home inspection, maybe some maintenance records mm -hmm. from the previous owner that type of information. So let's just talk about an inspection report for a second. If that inspection says, and let's just assume it's a furnace, because it's the time of year. Right? Hey, the furnace is really old, past its life expectancy, but it works. Mm -hmm. That turns a no into a yes. Oh, wow. Hmm. If it says, now this is important, if it says it's really old, but it works, but we recommend, I'm talking about the but the inspector, we recommend having a certified HEA safe technician come out. More than likely, that's what it's going to say, mm -hmm. right? Is that mm -hmm. what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Have a certified HEA safe technician come on out and take a look. That's why. Well, on your deal, we're dealing one right now. Yeah. So we asked for that if we were Andrew John. Yeah. Because that's exactly what it says. Yeah. Or else I'd like to start to say that the security is better than right. now. We, we suggest to have so and so come out. Yeah. Well, they didn't want to do it. And that was my exact response. And now with that language in the home inspection, if we don't have it done, yeah. if something goes wrong, they're not going to cover it. But as That's our right. job as a buyer, we need to make sure our buyers are protected and get that, at least give me the inspected thing. Yeah. Like that. In, our case, it's, it's in our case, it's only going to, in our case, it's only going to be an issue if and when we say, what else do you have? Do you have a home inspection? If that, if that is the, if, if you, if we see that and you don't have the proof that you've actually had that done, then it's not going to cause us to feel like we need to change the determination mm -hmm. because you did not meet the the recommendations okay so if you ever have questions about this and sometimes before we get to a claim situation i might say hey it's just you and me talking here why don't you send me what you've got and i'll take a look and just make sure but there but just to be very clear no home inspection report is ever going to be used by choice home warranty to turn a yes into a no. Mm -hmm. Only a no into a yes. Okay. Maintenance records can be very helpful too. And I, I, I won't say I think it's easy or no that it would be easy for a buyer or a buyer's agent to acquire that level of information from a seller. But if it can be gotten, get it. Because if there's current maintenance records, then that that certainly is going to prove to us that we can maintain. So, and here's the other reason you want to maybe even if it doesn't say in the in the uh, inspector report have maintenance done. Well, you know what makes things last longer and work better? Regular maintenance. And so that's the that's the added benefit. It's going to those furnaces and air conditioners are going to work longer or work better and last a little longer. And then when they do break down, that's where we come in and we're gonna fix it or replace it. More than likely in the next few years, we're gonna be replacing a lot of these things because Freon, oh, I have to finish that. In a year and a half, 
we won't be able to put recharge with Freon, so a, a system that has Freon it, something is going to have to change. There's going to have to be a new alternative, some th synthetic version of Freon that is found to not be uh, detrimental to the environment, the environment or the future of, or, or, the, or, the, or the working of the, of the equipment, or we're just going to have to replace a lot of with something with, with what's called 410A or pure, often called Puron, which is a friendly version of refrigerant. So that's that's going to be hitting everybody hard in about a year and a half. And the likelihood is you're going to see terms and conditions continue to get more restrictive and or, and probably both, the price of warranties to go up. Because the cost to man uh, to, to manage them is going to go up for companies like ours. Go ahead. Yeah, it's almost up. Yeah. Um, what are some things that people assume when thinking of these that are covered that aren't? You've got to have a set that people are like, oh shit, that's not covered. And it's and vice versa, what's covered that agents may not realize is covered. And then we are like plumbing, leaking, yeah. leaks. Like, is that all covered? Yeah, so, well, yeah, generally speaking, that's right. So when you're talking about plumbing, it's leaks and breaks of the uh, Water line. Oh, something very unique to Columbus. Uh, the 700 odd standard contracts around the country. Um, there's only one, as far as I, I've been able to discover, and I, I've been around the country. There's only one that has the word gas line in it, and it's the one here in Central Ohio. Mm -hmm. So, as you, if you do business, as your son does business in Colorado and, and Florida, or heck, yeah, even if you sell a house in Springfield or Dayton or Cleveland. They're not going to be asking about the gas line. If I don't get 10 calls and texts a day saying, was the gas line included, then I know I'm not doing my job. But the gas line is included. And I've yet to find a home warranty that does not include the gas line. About a decade ago, and, and by the way, some of my, my sick, some of my fellow sales reps might not even be aware of that. But the answer is if you look in the plumbing section of the terms and conditions, you're going to see the different lines that are covered the water and sewer. Well, that's right. Well, and, and that that was a that was a, a great warranty that I don't think exists. They don't do that anymore. Right. But that had some teeth in it that that a typical gas line co coverage wouldn't have. To, to to be fair, I mean, the gas line is just an intrinsic part of a warranty. It's not a gas line warranty. It's just a gas line that's included in the warranty. Right. If that makes sense. Now, a lot of folks will ask about what's happening outside the house. Some warranty companies have started to add coverage, and there are certainly limitations of liability on those. Uh, we don't do that. Maybe someday we will, but the reality is two things. Number one, Kuko said about a decade ago, give or take, Public Utilities Commission of Ohio, called Puko. Puko says, nobody, not you, not me, not one of our contractors, not XYZ warranty company or any other warranty company, no, no HVA, no, nobody, no, no plumber can touch that gas line outside the house except for one entity in, in central Ohio, which is primarily Columbia Gas. Columbia gas. And that is it. So whoever, unless, unless I am completely mistaken about this, and I don't think I am, whenever anybody calls about a gas line outside the house, even if you're calling a different warranty company, they're calling Columbia Gas. That's all they're doing. Gas. So on that note, I've done plenty of research on this subject, and I even just reaffirmed this yesterday or the day before. I called Columbia Gas and I said, tell me about the coverage on exterior lines that you have. And for ballpark $10, I think it's 9 dollars you can have water, sewer, septic, and gas line coverage from the curb to the grass. So for about 10 bucks now, that's something maybe the, the buyers won't move for, but it's going to be just put on their Columbia gas monthly bill. So there's an answer to that question, if anybody has one. Uh, so, so what can we cover? Not, not what can we cover, are there any misconceptions where people might have popularized and people think that, and there may not be, I'm just asking you, you have to get uh, Hey, let's not do anything and don't worry, Tom will take care of it. How about uh, that one? You know, there's a lot of... I don't want to use the word collusion, although that's a big word in our society these days, but a lot of agents, I think, tend to rely on a home warranty to fix a lot of things that probably should have been remedied. And, and 
Um, instead of, I'm say yeah, sure, you know, please. Instead of uh, a lot of times you come to a head and the plus one is the seller's not willing to fix that mm -hmm. and the buyer wants it fixed, so you have to send the buyer, don't worry about it, and the seller's not going to get it. That, insurance fraud. It may, and, and listen, a lot of times that's going to be okay, but it's just not, a, there's no certainty on that. I can tell you, just so you know, we had a view, I think it might have said Zillow Hedges, isn't it? I don't know how to say it. Anyway, we'll beep that out, right? But that's exactly what happened. We had it in writing. Yeah. And the, the buyer, I've only said it was an ACO to be that. It was like $2,000. Mm -hmm. Not only did the agent have to cover it, but she got to with the insurance initially as a way of life insurance. Yeah. Well, so that's it. And listen, you know, we're, we're going to, I'm going to do my best and my company's going to do our best, but that is not a fail safe method for doing things. And well, keep in mind, huh? <laughs> well, I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> I'm saying it may, yeah. it may work out, but I wouldn't count on it. I would also say this, that you've got to remember this. Warranty companies mitigate exposure. They don't completely eliminate exposure. They're oftentimes going to be expenses that go beyond the coverage and some warranties don't include and most i mean this is true most warranties are not going to include um access so there's going to be very limited amounts of money for access so just for instance the other day um a homeowner um we just we, we approved to replace a water heater about eight minutes after the closing Wow. You're welcome, agent. Do I will not name here? <laughs> that's okay. That's part of my job is to make sure we 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 look beyond the color outside the lines when we need to sometimes. And it turns out that the water heater was going into a into a closet with a 19 inch or so opening. And when that water when the water heater that needed to replace was was made and put in there, it was. Smaller than 19 inches. A few years ago, federal regulations changed the way that water heaters need to be made in order to be more energy efficient and environmentally friendly. And they've typically gotten a little shorter and a lot wider. So now, in order to get that same 50 gallon or even a 40 gallon into a spot where the 50 gallon was, would require cutting drywall, uh, removing and cutting drywall and all sorts of access stuff that, you know, as much as I'd like to say yes to everything, sometimes there's just going to be some exposure that a homeowner is going to have to incur themselves. By the way, that was on an investment property, just to pay you this. So, so the right. owner was in California, the home was here in Ohio, and, and so we were able to take care of these folks and arrange for it all to happen, but we didn't, we, we that's something that a lot of people assume we're going to cover every nickel and dime. And remember this for $500, $600, in our case, $550 for our best plan. These are not magic bullets. Magic bullets cost a lot more than $500. Right. It's um, uh, our agents that are online that are watching, and some that will be watching this recorded. Mm -hmm. um, are you able to help other states too, or just here? Absolutely. Our choice home warranty, and I want, if you go to our website, I want you to, as opposed to going to choicehomewarranty.com, which is fine, we have a realtor portal, and it is CHW Pro. That's an acronym for Choice Home Warranty. Pro is what you are. CHWPRO.com. If you go there, you'll start off in a place where you are going to see the warranties that are designed for realtors and real estate transactions. There's a whole other class of warranties that warranty companies like mine and all of the other big ones have that is designed for the existing homeowner. And it's very it's different, much more restrictive. And if you want a more detailed account of it than that, I'd be happy to do it. But start off at choice of chwpro.com. And if you have any clients, even if they're existing homeowners or you know they're past their past clients or clients in stasis, waiting until they have something to buy or sell again. They are your clients, they are our clients, and we will find a way to work together to give them the best warranty that we have to offer, which is the one that you offer to your, your current active sellers and buyers. We have a mechanism to do that. If, if that's something that you want to do, then I want to put them in touch either directly with me or a member of my team. But yes, you can talk to Tom Nichols about what's happening in all the states across the country. You do business every day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
there typically does, but when you know it's when you know ways somebody when you know somebody like me, yeah. there are ways to and we have and we have we'll put some expectations in place uh, that, that that will make sure that everybody is covered appropriately. We're taking on a bit of an added risk in that type of a situation. So we'll we'll talk about that and I'd be happy to talk about it now, but I'm sure time will preclude me from really doing that. Seller yeah. Oh. Different for listings. The so listings this is work. yeah. This is really important. So whatever the buyer, the buyer is getting, whatever the terms and conditions are for a buyer, it is it is very likely, with one known exception, to be different for the seller. There are going to be a couple of big change differences. One is going to be what's called an aggregate um, total, an aggregate cap, and typically for a seller, it's about on average about fifteen hundred dollars. So even if the 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 water heater and the and the furnace both die and need to be fixed or replaced and that, that would cost five, six, seven, eight thousand, whatever it would cost, the maximum exposure a warranty company is going to have towards a, a seller, and this is prior to having a warranty being paid for, is fifteen hundred dollars, give or take. It'll be a little more or a little less with most. My company is the one exception to the rule. We do not have an aggregate cap for our warranty. Um, in the whole, we have aggregate caps in categories, but there's enough money to do full replacement. And we treat the seller the same way we treat the buyer. Because that's you. Guess what? You know who's paying for these things by and large? It's the seller. Wouldn't it be nice if we treated them with a little respect? Okay. Is that an applause or are you yeah. just? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that very often. But that so that's an important difference. But this is another important one, and this is kind of a local Central Ohio thing. Um, there's a warranty company that around here that um, that includes HVAC, the furnace and the air conditioner, as part of their listings coverage. As limited as it may be, it's it's included. There's no. Uh, no uh, difference in terms of the ordering process for the sellers and buyers. With our, with with Choice Home Warranty and with the vast majority of home warranty companies, there is an option to add the HVAC, which is the furnace, the air conditioner, and the duct work for the listing client. But there's usually a fee associated with it, and in our case, it's a sixty dollars fee. They're typically sixty, seventy dollars or so, but it's simply an optional item that needs to be added, and it, it's not paid. Prior to the closing table, but if you want it, you've got to add it. If you don't want it, then you don't add it. It's as simple as that. And you can make a choice a la carte every time you do it. And just a little bit of information, house. Um, it, it's just in general. When we were in my home, you might know because you were in car sales. There was a sales training with them, and they said it was this car dealership that trained every one of their salespeople to talk about little parts of the actual car being made, how they were gold. Right. With this, and it was just it really went into these points of the, the care and the treatment and the quality that went into the car, and their sales were by far way better than everybody else once they started doing this. Mm. But what they didn't realize was what the customers didn't realize was everybody was required, they people were required to be bold and to be like, oh. but just because they taught their sales to train to, to talk about it. I use this whole morning in every one of my listing presentations. And I bet you Gary just probably offer it too. They don't talk about it. So the assumption is Stacey's much greater because look, she's going to get my house covered. If anything goes wrong while you're listing, no dime more. I mean, the furniture trader, the, and just the fact that you talked about it and that you use it as above and beyond the other agent that might be coming right behind you. you and listen, as, and as this market is changing, and forgive me if I'm using the wrong term for it, but I'd say it's softening. Is that fair to say? Yeah. The sellers aren't up on high right. of a purchase they were recently and the buyers aren't lining up at the door yeah. three minutes after the open house with cash in hand. Right. Mm -hmm. And so so uh, you were asking uh, Jim was asking me before we walked in here, how's my business? Well my business is up for a lot of reasons and because we've got a great product and but it's also up because as this market is changing, shifting certainly, I don't know if normal is even a thing anymore, but sellers are much more likely to be amenable to agreeing to provide a few things, including a home warranty, where, 
last year and the year prior, they weren't so ready. And, and agents probably were saying, hey, don't ask, don't offer anything. If they ask for it, we'll decide. But now it's not a bad idea to be prepared. Put something in place. And then as you are negotiating, you can say, hey, great news, you've already got a warning for us. Now, back to what you and I were talking about, maybe you know, negotiate away from choice because the other agent's got a strong feeling about another one, but I'd rather have you start with that chip on your stack. Yep. We're happy to have you do it. We flipped our deal the other day. Yeah. From their home warranty and, and so, so use this for that. And, and, and if it comes down to it, we're not going to be forcing anybody to buy something. Quite frankly, the only way a warranty goes into effect is when the money reaches our bank account after for the buyer. So you put that listings coverage in place and use it. And if you need it, it's there. And if you need it and you use it, the likelihood is it's going to make a lot of sense for everybody to continue that on. It's, it's going to strengthen our position. Right. But even if you have to negotiate away from choice on warranty, that is okay. That's really okay. We don't want you to. But we figure if our name is in the conversation a little more often, we're going to get into more deals. And that's really what it's about for us. So use it. And you should put, you should put, you should make that a part of every transaction. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. We right. all the time right now. You know, the thing you know, it's always a question. Is, should I really pay for my or Should I spend a dollar? Well, in this kind of market, they may not need to. I mean, stuff can move so quickly. Mm -hmm. So that's usually what I tell them. Listen, if it's working, let's not worry about it. If you have to figure out why we're listening to a couple hundred and so on warranty, if the buyer asks, we'll address it then. Right. You know, so. Yeah. Great job, Tom. The uh, recording on that, I can tell you, uh, Tom's very accessible. Um, it's very important when you have home warranty rep that you get a hold of them when you need them. 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not going to need them, but when you do, you need them and you need them quick. He's super accessible. Can I hold so, it that 99%? Yeah, right. <laughs>